Oh, that's fresh. That's right. What is up, Buckeye Nation? This is the Buckeye Cast with your faithful host, Joe Warwick. And I have a three-way for you today. We're going to three sausage this sandwich with extra <laughs> cheese. <laughs> and As you know, we are born and bred in the Buckeye State. We're bringing this podcast to you to give you a little different point of view. I've got my brother Jeff coming to you. Hello, from, everyone. Hello, hello. Coming to you from Orlando, Florida. I'm in St. Pete. Sean is coming to you, as you all know, from Detroit. Behind enemy lines, fighting a good fight. That's right. So we're going to hit you with a little Rutgers recap and uh, talk about our Red Knights. And then uh, we'll get into a little bit of Indiana pregame and and uh, some predictions to finish it up. So let's um, let's get into the Rutgers game. Um, Sean, what do you think? Uh, what stood out to you? Well, I mean, outside of you know, just everybody playing, all these recruits we've been talking about. I mean, everybody was on the field this week. That that was great to see. But what stood out to me was the defensive performance. They had 33 yards passing when they were down that far, and all of those came in the first half, I believe. They didn't have a completed pass in the fucking second half. <laughs> when you're wow. down like that, that's incredible. I think our secondary is out of their minds good. Nice. Just playing balls. Yeah, I agree with that. That's what I took. Yeah. Great game. Jeff, what do you take away? Uh, first thing, uh, the first quote I saw was from Coach Chris Ash, and I, and I quote, they smothered us. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> that was his quote on, on the game recap. Smothered. Um, Perfect word. That 33 yards passing, 20 of that was on the first play of the game. Um. <laughs> Completely, completely dominated. <laughs> Very impressive. Um, D line, the interior of the D line looked good. Mm-hmm. I, they look, they're they're getting better. Landers, yeah. my God, <laughs> those guys are coming along. So, um, just, just continuing to build. And and we got Matt Millen gushing over us for Christ's I, sakes. I I, I, mean, I give Joe some credit on the on the Landers man. He called him a couple weeks ago. That yeah. Boy, fucking yeah. It's interesting you guys both point out uh, the defense. Um, and, by the way, you realize the rotation they have going on, not just on the D-line, but also in the secondary. They're rotating four corners in there. Mm-hmm. Never done that yeah. before. We never had depth like that. Dude, I looked this up, and I don't know. This is a crazy stat to me. Um, 27 dudes had tackles. Wow. 27 wow. different people had tackles. Yeah. I mean, everybody wow. played. Everybody contributed. It was, I mean, that was as good of as you could have possibly wanted, expect, hope for. Yeah, if you and, scroll down. And the... I think, uh, did, did you hear the quote? They, someone, I think one of the announcers said it during the game, Urban the Merciful. And then I saw something later that said Urban the Destroyer. <laughs> um, I think he was merciful uh, in that fourth quarter. Yeah. You know, I we could have kept piling it on. Yeah, yeah, it's, I agree. I, I mean, you got a you got a you got a freshman quarterback handing off to a true freshman tailback. If he's going, you know, what what McCall seventy yards on four carries or some shit? Yeah. What are we supposed to? Who are we supposed to put in and finish the game if we can't put in our third running back? He had who was 10, a true freshman. Ten carries for eighty five. <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry. They but, they got him. They got him for a few. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, we he, so he, JT wanted to play two. He wanted two series of JT in the, in the third quarter. Well, Mike Weber breaks a 70 yard run on on one drive. 
Well, so then JT comes out, works on, they work on something, probably something specific they wanted to work on. And then he got him out of there. Uh, JT I, uh, is cool as a cucumber, yeah. man. That dude yeah. is... Speaking of that, I want to back up a little bit into that uh, two-minute drill that was run perfectly to end the first half. That was nice. It's been a while since we've had a, a solid two-minute drill. Not that we needed it for this game, but it, it was good to work on it and to see that we can actually execute. Yeah, to do it th- in the game is good, I think, but I mean, shit, it, it, it's harder to do in practice when Lattimore and Conley are gobbling dudes up. On, right. I mean, uh, shit, the Rutgers uh, just overmatched in every way, shape, or form. But you know, I don't know. I, I watch that game, and you know, I watch them with the scarlet and gray colored glasses. And then I watched a lot of college football this weekend, and I. I don't see anybody that's like the Buckeyes, that's as fast as the Buckeyes. I, I don't. Not up and down and all around like that. I agree. People helping people. Um, so let's talk about JT breaking the, the career touchdown record at Ohio State. Uh, did it in 21 games. That that seems impossible. That That's not even two full seasons. Uh Oh geez, yeah. What, I mean, what do you what do you say about that? I mean, I don't know what I don't know how many games Bobby Hoying had, but he was a three year starter, I believe. Yeah. Um, yeah, he didn't leave early. No. <laughs> but um, it goes to the offenses that we you know the offenses the that he played under. Is, exactly, exactly, and that has a lot to do with it. Oftentimes, I think. Uh, yeah. Imagine where he'd be if he would have started all last year like he should have. I mean, hell, he would he would have broke it last year. He'd have been with two more years of eligibility. He could have put it so far in the books, no one would ever catch it. Yeah, that's a good point, though. Uh, the system definitely makes the quarterback, um, and he, he's perfect for the system. I don't know if if uh, mm. we'll ever find a better quarterback, honestly, with with his complete set. I mean, what do you think, Jeff? No, I, he runs that offense. I mean, Tom. That's it goes back to Tom Herman being a genius. He brought him. To Urban Meyer and said, right. "You got to look at this kid in Texas. Yeah. He he runs the mm-hmm. offense exactly the way Urban wants it ran. Um, you know, he's not breakaway Lamar Jackson speed or Deshaun Watson size. You know, but I'll take him over I over every any other quarterback in the nation right now. I tr- would trust him more now. Glenn, like you said, Sean, you know the silver, the scarlet and gray glasses, but." I would I would I would take Ohio State over any team in the country right now simply because the quarterback play. You you, you just you, you trust him to do exactly what they they want on the offense. And 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 exactly. Coach Warner Warner going up to the press box is I don't know, it just it, our team changed when that happened, when they made that change at the end of last season. Yeah. I don't know what it was about them calling plays or you know, back One to that mission. too fucking late, but yeah. Right, right. I mean, it ruined it ruined what could have be what could have been and what potentially could be like this this run of Ohio State that Alabama had put together. You know, the previous four or five years. I mean, you go back to yeah. our national title through last season. That that one hiccup is what screwed us, and yeah. what what we're building on right now. I mean, Bama we, didn't want to. Bama wasn't one to play us the end of last year. No, no, nobody did. No. Mm-mm. Cool. So let's move along. Uh, still have not allowed a rushing TD by the defense this year. That's to be noted. Uh, I always love a shutout, so I, I was hyped about that. Um, what else? Sean, any other takeaways before we move along? No, just, uh, gosh, all around great game. And I think, I mean, Rutgers is outmatched. They're still going to be a few years away from you know, being a, a mid-tier Big Ten team. They're still bottom barrel down there with Purdue and shit. But, uh, I, you know, this this week, I guess, Michigan plays them. Let's let's see what Michigan does. Yeah. Um, and you we know, get, we get to play Indiana, and we can get and, you know, see what's going on with this Big Ten. Yeah, this is when things really start to shake out, you know, uh, as we saw with Sparty last week. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And uh, 
we'll see what happens going forward. And you don't know what you're competing against right now. Like um, the Oklahoma game against TCU over the weekend, I saw TCU was up what twenty-one to nothing at some at one point early on, and I was like, oh god, Oklahoma's not going to help us at all. I kind of had god, that feeling after that game as well. Yeah, thank God because Friday night I better do it at this poker game I was in that Oklahoma was going to win the Big Twelve because that whole conference sucks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they could. Good luck. <laughs> right. We went down there and I was like, shit, I hate to see this motherfucker next week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, uh, the stat sheet was loaded this week. Um, we can go up and down that. I don't really see a need. Um, some some great offensive efforts, honestly. Uh, and like I said before, I'd, I'd love a shutout by the D. I'd take it, it, 12 of those a year. To me, it seems like every player is getting better. You see, you see like improvement week to week across the board. Everyone. I mean, and, and usually, you know, some people, you know, we, we feature a different receiver just about every game, you know, but they all look, I mean, Terry McLaurin, he looked like he's, a reg, he looked like a regular full-time starter out there. You like know, a real you receiver, know. yeah. Yeah. He, uh, it, like it, he has just, some guns, too. I thought he was skinny. That dude looked kind of ripped. No, he's a big boy. Terry McLaurin. And it, his, um, and he's, he's been great now as a champion almost every game. A lot of that's due to his blocking, but you see he finally got the ball this game. And, and what opportunity? Great catch in the end zone. Uh, oh, you know. geez, that was a sick catch. I mean, I, yeah. yeah. It just, you know, and it, you, they were working. It looked like they worked on that all week in practice because I, I saw a video of Paris Campbell catching one on Gary and Conley, almost as good as um, Noah Brown's catch. Same type of right in the back corner, reached around Connolly the back of his helmet and grabbed it one handed. You know that um, brings me to something I just thought. You know, you're, so, you're talking about JT with with these receivers, and I've heard like two different ones say, you know, when J- they've got to go get that ball for JT. JT trusts them to go get that ball, and they do. Um, it just goes back to what you're saying about JT and his leadership. And I mean, these guys are. Uh, Sorry for that tangent, but that that JT, I just couldn't get out of my mind. Those kids, all the receivers are fucking balling out. And it looked like they made a concerted effort to try and get Benjamin Victor the ball as well. Maybe yeah, me. yeah. Hey, Myers, hey. Myers said, this kid's so damn good, I, we got to get him on the field. Yeah. Do you see it, though? Uh, and Victor, he looks, I mean... I don't know. I I'll take Urban Meyer's word for it, man. If he says the kid's so good, we got to find playing time for him. I trust that he's doing the right thing. He, you know, he's still he's still got a lot to learn. He's a pretty raw talent, but he's disgustingly good, though. I mean, he he. I think it's just next year he'll thrive. I think, but yeah. um, he, we got more competition coming down <laughs> coming down the road. So, yeah. um. But I think I think I think you'll see him more predominant next year, um, just because the other guys with the experience, um, they're just going to be filling, you know, hogging up that playing time. But I think yeah, we'll see him make plays. We're gonna. This isn't our last blowout. We're gonna have a few more. We got Northwestern on schedule, I believe. <laughs> yeah. And I think and I think I think we got Maryland too for sure. Well, so, you um, know, again through those glasses. I don't know who we're not going to run out. Right now, I don't know who we're not going to run out. Uh, somebody stop us first, and then I'll then I'll believe we're not going to run you out. Mm-hmm. But hey, nobody's well, done it so far. Yeah, I'm looking at the you know looking at the schedule. I, who can score points with us? Exactly. Did you uh, you guys did you guys sit through that whole Michigan Wisconsin game? I tried. Most. That was oh brutal. my god, oh my god. I, I told think you. I fell asleep partway through the third quarter and woke back up. But I told you I changed the color on my TV to black and white. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, you know I, I didn't mostly because I, I hate that, that piss joke, yellow. I, I didn't know what that joke meant, Joe, but now I get it. Okay, <laughs> you caught me off guard a little bit with that one Saturday. And I hate that fucking yellow shit. It makes me want to vomit. Yeah, I don't. I don't. They might. They got. They got some DBs that can play. Hmm. I mean, they do. But they they can't score with us. No, they better hope our offense shoots ourselves in all ten toes yeah. twice. 
uh, that's the only way they're going to be able to hang on that field with us. I yeah. don't see it any other way. I agree. Uh, I look. I don't know what it is, but I'm not worried about them fools yet. I I think I think everyone might be a fraud. I think we're going to run Indiana out in Columbus, and then I think we're going to go to Camp Randall, and we're going to show Michigan and Michigan State how to beat Wisconsin in their house, and we're going to beat them by three fucking scores too. See, I think that, to me, looks like the toughest game until we play Sparty, honestly. Because uh, going, going to Wisconsin at night is not easy, and that defense is nasty. Their quarterback is fucking garbage, though. Well, yeah. I, I'm not saying he's going <laughs> to score points with us, but uh, their defense might be able to keep him in a game. Well, Sparty's going to have to show me something because Sparty's garbage. So I, I think this Wisconsin game right now is, is um, the way the season looked so far to date. The Wisconsin game is going to be a lot harder than the going to East Lansing. East Lansing oh, yeah. is going to be a cakewalk. Um, I agree. Okay. At Wisconsin's a tough, a tough crowd. Um, but I don't know. These kids are so hungry, it seems. They haven't let up yet. And, I, you know, good on the coaches. Yeah. Um, and they, and, and and they want to they want to fight for that quarterback too. I mean, JT's leadership is they, they all man for man, I think will follow him through a brick wall. Well, I, I did hear, I did hear Herb say that he's getting to that Tim Tebow level of leadership. Hmm. And you know, I don't care what you think about Tim Tebow. Urban Meyer thinks the fucking world of him. I think he's one of the greatest guys to ever walk this planet. So yeah. if, if he's starting to put Barrett in, in that light, I, I like where we're at, where we're headed. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You talk about the most underrated quarterback in the country. Jesus Christ, the guy was in New York two years ago, and <laughs> now he doesn't even get mentioned in the same sentence with uh, Watson, uh, Jackson, anybody else. I actually love it that he's not getting mentioned. I think it's yeah. perfect. I think it it burns mm -hmm. and that whole t I, our whole team. Um. I mean, I, I I love that he's not getting all that hype and getting the, you know, all the media requests every week when he's when he wants to be working, you know, on, on you know, doing tape and everything. Yeah. So keep yeah, keep ignoring him. We're gonna sneak up on all of them. Yeah. <laughs> By all means, I'm fine with that too. Alone. Yeah. Well, and and not only that, but um, you know, my boy Curtis fucking Samuel. I'm telling you what, I think Curtis Samuel outside of quarterbacks is the best offensive player in college football. The dude is different. He's special. I, I Maybe I, I haven't seen everybody. Maybe there's some other ones. But I, he looks better than that McCaffrey as far as I'm concerned. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, when he's got the ball in his hand, he's di he's it's different. It is different. It's not. It is. You're not watching, you're not watching the regular college football player. You're watching that next-level talent. It, it, yeah. it is. It, it jumps out at you. It does. It does. It pops off the TV like fuck, and he gets yeah. he gets tackled a little bit by the ankles too often. But gosh, he's still fast. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So that's, Herb named him the uh, number one playmaker on the team for a reason, and uh, he's filling that role to a team. Yeah. So let's. Uh, migrate on here um, and talk about this Indiana team um, three and one they beat Sparty last week their first Big Ten game uh, in overtime decent decent win for that program uh, it's a big oh, deal for them that's a huge win for them yeah um, but for us this is always a tight game um, defense will be tested uh, if you look at some of the numbers these guys have been putting up uh, this season. They score points. Yeah, they score 30-plus a game. Uh, what they do, uh, they threw for 500 yards against Wake Forest. Uh, I know it's Wake Forest, but that's still a D1 team with scholarship players, you know. How'd that, um, how'd that end up? That they lost. Yards. They lost. Exactly. <laughs> Well, yeah, they can't. They can't stop anybody from. <laughs> they can't stop anybody from scoring, but they can. They'll, they'll score with you every. With the last couple, probably the last three or four years with with Indiana, it's been high scoring. Neither you know, it, neither team has been able to really slow each other down. We just capitalize on a few more mistakes than than they do. Um, but yeah, I, I think they're still going to move the ball on us. 
Now, I don't think their running game, they've sent a couple running backs to the pros in the last couple of years. So I don't think their running game's probably going to be on par as it has. But um, they can still throw the ball. So, yeah. But I, but I tell you what, I I would love a, I love a passing team coming up against us. Home they or away. Big fat ass hammer guy, some freshman. They played a bunch against Michigan State. Natty. He's like 250, 260, something like that. Anytime they needed short yeah. yardage, they were playing that kid. All right. Um, Duly noted. Yeah, watch this fat ass. <laughs> <laughs> they got a they got a few good receivers too. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see our our secondary with the youth going up against uh, some of these guys that are putting up 100 yards a game and multiple touchdowns. So I I think that's going to be the huge challenge for us, and um, obviously getting pressure on the quarterback plays into that. Um, what? Jeff, to you, what do you think? Um, what do you think they're going to bring to the table to try and beat our defense? I, I'm, I'm sure their coaches are all looking in that film room, like, where, where's the weakness? Where, where can we exploit them? I still think they're, I still think they're going to try to target our interior line. Um, I, they, they've, they've seen nothing on any film anywhere. I don't think that says they can exploit us on the outside, on the perimeter. They know we have way more speed than they do, way more athletic ability. Um, I don't know, that I don't, off the top of my head, I don't know the size of the receivers. I don't know if they feel like they have a, a, a physical mismatch on a uh, maybe a Denzel Ward who's a little bit shorter, um, but something like that. But I, you know, I, I think they're going to try to run the ball, control the clock, slow us down, keep the ball away from us, and take try to take some big shots i i don't think they i don't see how they could think that they're going to consistently you know move long drives against us i think it's just control the clock and try to hit a big one yeah Yeah. uh henry what do you think we're going to do on offense it's more of the same or you think we're going to uh pound it more and play more ball control I think same same game plan as Rutgers. Everybody gets it. I think we blow these fucking guys out. I mean, I wouldn't change a thing on offense. It worked <laughs> majestically as far as I can see. Um, so now I'm going to stay with that game plan. Um, spread the ball around. It looks like Paris Campbell, you know, he had a nice game. Maybe he's the guy that's going to step up. Uh, but, I mean, like, Noah Brown, he's like the Warren Beatty of actors. Wide receivers, man. Fucking, where, where is he? He does something awesome, and then you don't fucking see him forever. Show me something. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> the guy had four touchdowns last game. And what do you expect? Hello? Oh, crap. I can hear you. Okay. Sean. Yeah, yeah. I'm with you. You got it? All right. Yeah, yeah we're all over here. Okay. Something dropped out. I had no audio at all, and look like my Wi-Fi was screwing up. Anyway, Ho- hopefully I'll... that Warren Beatty comment dropped out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the... nice reference. <laughs> but no, on, on, everyone on can associate offense. with him. <laughs> but no, I I, I just uh, use up my time talking about the same thing Jeff was. I think they're gonna try and pound that rock. They got a couple good running backs. I think the guy they got's like third in the Big Ten in rushing, and really um, try. I, 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 they're gonna have to slow it down. I mean, if they start doing that fast shit, and we start three and out them, man, that no wonder their D sucks. That D's be gas trying to chase fucking Curtis Samuel on that football field. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> all day long. One right. quick note, Joe, from the uh, from from last week's game. One quick note. Yeah. Great. Champions graded out. All five offensive linemen graded out as champions. That's good. It's good to hear. Very nice to see. Um, people helping people. People helping people. Yes. It feels so good. Par- Paris Campbell and Terry McLaurin, only two receivers graded as champions. Wow. And the, the whole bunch of defensive guys. Our whole starting backfield. Chris Worley had a great game. Yeah, I love it. Great game. He plays that nasty. Dude in, in coverage, run support, everything across the board. Yep, I love that bubble screen they tried to run, and he just blasted the receiver behind the line of scrimmage. 
Gave Genius. Gave me a shiver, yep. The guy's on the ground, he can't catch it. Yep. Now, Indiana's defense isn't terrible. They're 28th in the country in yards allowed. Are they really? Yeah. But, you know, it, it, you got to take it with who they've played, too. Okay, they, they played Wake Forest and Michigan State, I know of. And then they right. played, like, Florida International. And yeah. And, like, okay. fucking French Toast. <laughs> tech. French Toast Tech. Is that overseas? <laughs> that might be an international prep school. I'm okay. not sure. <laughs> Are they in Montreal? Right. Yeah. I think they're going to try and run a lot of gadget plays. You know, we've seen some of that in the past. I I watched some of the highlights from the Michigan State game. They tried that bullshit, you know, like a oh, a rollout to the uh, a sweep <laughs> yeah. where the dude throws back to the quarterback, you know, and and then some misdirection type stuff too, you know. They're going to try that again and Lattimore is going to hit that quarterback so fucking hard. <laughs> they're going to fucking try that play again. They're going to, right. He better have his mouthpiece in because he's going to knock his teeth out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I, I agree with you guys. I, I think the D is, is going to gonna lay the wood to these fools. I, I don't see them putting up 30 this week, that's for sure. I, they may squeeze in two touchdowns, but that's generous. Yeah, I think that, you know, late, it gets later in the game. We kind of put a, build, kind of stretch it out, build a lead, pull some guys. You know, they might you know, might get some scores there, but you know, I kind of thought that in the Tulsa game, I kind of thought that in this Rutgers game too. Um, you know, Meyer would want to let off the gas a little bit, not to embarrass his you know former coach. Um, they had they had their starting corners in the whole game. Rutgers did. Yeah. Did you realize that? Yeah, I did. I did. And everybody They're was playing. making plays on them too. Yes. Oh, yeah. Third, fourth quarter, the dudes, same two dudes. Uh, numbers, I think they're 11 and 12, or 11 and 10, maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, um, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, they might, they, we might give up a few more points. Um, I say a few more. We're, only, we're averaging nine a game. Um, we're if they if they break 20, if yeah, we're averaging giving up nine nine point three something like that, nine point three a game. You realize that so that's including a pick six and a return kickoff. That's good. That's, yeah. That's fucking crazy. Our defense has outscored the, or the offenses we played this year going into the last game, and obviously that hasn't changed. Yeah. So, yeah, 20, yeah, like 28 to 23, we've outscored the offenses we've played. Hmm. It's staggering numbers. I mean, yeah. mind-boggling. Um, but these guys are hungry. They These kids are hungry as shit. They, they almost took it as an offense that – People were saying we would be down this year because we lost so many pros. I mean, they're like, well, you know, just because you haven't seen us doesn't, you know, doesn't mean we're fucking bullshit. I think they they have a huge chip on their shoulder, and I I just hope they keep it. Um, yeah, I think I think Meyer knows what what pedals to push and and what strings to pull uh, with these kids to keep them on edge. And if, and if you're a young recruit, I mean, aren't you licking your chops to play at Ohio State? I mean, if you yeah. play there, you go pro. If you can play early. Um, and you go pro, and you win. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sucks. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. So. A1 me... facilities, I mean, what, yeah. what, I don't know the downside. There's snow in December. That's that's your downside. So you don't even, kids... And you don't even play in December. And then when you do – when bowl season rolls around in January, you're going somewhere you warm anyway. Yeah. So, all right, let's drill down a little deeper into this team and uh, talk about who you have your microscope on for this week on the Buckeyes. Um, I'll go first, and uh, I- I'm going to focus on um, Denzel Ward. Like you mentioned earlier, Jeff, I was focused on him because of his size, and he's he's playing uh, quite a bit of uh, reps him and Arnett so I'm going to focus on Denzel Ward see if this kid can really uh, come in and play because we're going to be in nickel situation pretty much the entire game Um, that's on defense on offense uh, I think I'm going to focus on uh, Weber and see if he can do a a nice back to back 100 yard weeks so uh, that's who I'm looking at Sean who do you got 
Well, I've got the. I'm I'm coming around. He told me from like game two. I'm uh, I'm watching that interior D line specifically Robert Landers, man. I'm loving this kid. I want to see him shut down this, these running backs. Indiana can run the ball, you know, because you are most teams you got to play them in nickel, so they run the ball and they got some big dudes that run hard. Um, the tackles are gonna need to fucking play a hell of a game. And so I got my eye specifically on your boy Landers, but that that group as a whole, it's going to be important this week. I think we're going to have to make sure we stop that, and they get nothing going any way around, and then we blow them out and run them out of the show. Uh, on offense, man, I, I, I don't have to focus on anybody because every time I look up and Curtis Samuel, my my eyes just go right to him because he's electric. I'm on Samuel, and I'm I I just want to know when the rest of the country is going to catch on that this kid is out of his fucking mind. Yep. Yeah, like like we talked about before with JT, you know, uh, another player under the radar, and that's fine. That's fine. Uh, under the radar, I might sneak up and punch you in the nuts. <laughs> uh, Jeff, who do you got this week for your microscope offense and defense? Uh, defense, I'm going I'm to talk about one of my favorite recruits, Sam Hubbard. Uh-huh. Um, been followed the kid since he's a senior in high school. I want to see – a more a, a dominant pass rush, constant pressure. I mean, he, he's always getting pressure. I want to see him have a breakout game, a kind of game that says, "Whoa, you know, NFL scouts, this guy completely, you know, can dominate, you know, his half of the field." Um, he makes plays all the time, but a lot of it's he might hurry the quarterback into another guy or something. He's always getting pressure, but I want to see him just have a real breakout game, fill up the stat sheet, um, and on offense. You know, Sean, Joe, we were talking about Curtis Samuel. The NFL scouts, they're not they're they're not downplaying this kid. I'm sure they've all caught plenty of notice from from Samuel. He he is hard to take his eyes off of. Um, I'd like I want to see I want to see him and Dontre both on the field together. Um, there's you know there's ways we can move them both around. Now you're taking away you know maybe Weber or someone else that obviously deserves the ball as well, but um, run like Trey, man. I, I, it's good to see him in the end zone last week, and uh, I'd like to see him on the field as well. But uh, yeah, when Sam was on the field, I can't take my eyes off him either. I mean, he's he's football porn. Yeah, I, I think McCall McCall might grow into that too. That little bastard looks good. Yeah, he's not afraid to run in between the tackles either. Him and Sam, they're <clears throat> tough little dudes, right? And they'll, they'll put another twenty pounds on on McCall, I bet. Yeah, easily. And he's gonna, he's gonna be a he's gonna be a problem for people in about two years. A real problem. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. So let's get into our uh, the odds. Like we talked about earlier, uh, spread is uh, twenty nine or thirty, wherever you decide to uh, lay action. And yeah. not sure what the over under will be. It's got to be in the high seventies, I would guess. Um, definitely not under seventy, but. Uh, uh, Jeff, let's go back to you. And uh, who? What's your prediction for this week? Fifty-two thirteen. Okay. Buckeyes rule, of course, and cover. Henry, what do you got? Oh, I got it uh, a little better than that. I'm I'm thinking it's going to be seventeen thirty-seven. Seventeen thirty-seven. Thirty-seven seventeen Buckeyes. Say it right. Sorry. <laughs> so, so they don't cover. I've been, I've, been, I've been drinking. No, I don't think they cover. I don't. I don't. I mean, they cover every week, and I fucking hate to say it, but I. I don't know. Okay. No, I don't think they cover. I don't think. So the points? streak, the streak is broken this week, huh? Fuck no! They'll run them out of there sixty to nothing. <laughs> you know, good goddamn well. Right. Is a their coach is one of Herb's disciples, right? Wilson? Is he? No. No. He's not? No. I do like him as a coach, though. Okay. I was thinking um, they had a past. Not from that tree. Uh-uh. Okay. Then, in that case, uh, we're definitely going over 58. Um, 58 is for uh, friends and, and family. <laughs> so, I see uh, I'm going 65, uh, 13, one touchdown. Wow. Two field goals, 
yeah, they're not getting two touchdowns on us. I don't see that. Uh, unless they pull a rabbit out of a fucking hat and, and he the scores. He's got to score, right? That's, yeah. This fucking guy threw five picks against Wake Forest. Five. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> hey, his players caught some of those. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> They caught 500 yards worth. The defense probably has caught another 200 yards worth. This, as long as these coaching staff keeps them focused and not let them look past somebody. I mean, these are still young kids, so you never know what you're going to get You know, yeah, week last, to week. Last, last I looked, uh, Wake Forest didn't have a Malik Hooker fucking roaming around back there. Right. No. And Matt Millen was ready to call him Ed Reed Jr. I oh, mean, I know. Oh, he's, uh, that was yeah. a little bit. And he I, said, he said right now, best best secondary in the country. And what did we think was no, going to be our weak spot? Long, he said in a long time. Since, since, yeah, since the since the one hurricane that had <laughs> five pros, and we sent three pros to the fucking league. Right. And he said, he said this is the best he's seen since then. And like we we had three we have three guys from last year's team in the yeah. fucking pros right now. Yeah. Did he not do a Buckeye game last year or something? No, nah, he wasn't sucking our dicks that bad. Yeah. He was. I mean, he could not stop about about our secondary, Lattimore especially. About, and Hooker. about time someone fucking recognized. <laughs> right. And Con- Conley, he didn't even mention Conley, and he was our re- the only returning starter. And, and a first round draft pick. Who's better, Conley or Lattimore? I. Hey, hear it. Listen, th- think about this. Who do they throw at more? Who do people throw at more? Lattimore. Lattimore. Yeah. But think about this. Imagine look at their shit broken up more. People well, are throwing that. <laughs> well, right. I'm not, I'm not saying it's working. I'm just saying what's what people are seeing. Right. Imagine uh, Lattimore being uh, entering the draft after this season. Say he has like all American type season. Very, very likely. He's eligible, Imagine that. Isn't he? Yeah. He's a junior. Wow. True junior. Yeah. That uh, hooker can leave too. Right. I mean, Conley, Lattimore, they're in the same class. You know uh, Damon Webb, all four of them could. I mean, they're all in wow. the same. They're all from the yeah. same class. Yeah. So, Webb's I mean, the only that, one that, that hasn't really lived up to the hype. But he makes plays, though. He does. He misses some too. Right, he, but he's just not exciting. But I think he was second on the team in tackles this week, I believe, or maybe not. But he he tackles. He just he's not flashy. He's not Von Bell. You know how they, you know how they talked about that old that that first recruiting class with Zeke and Bosa and them. All four of those DBs came out of the same recruiting class. I mean, think about what that class might become with right. Sam Hubbard and a few others. I mean, yeah. that's that class is shaping up to be uh, well, pretty well, nice as well. Are. I mean, it's ridiculous where we're at with in regards to the recruits, but. Our, our average recruit coming in next year is like a 95 rating. <laughs> Something stupid like that. I know. Jeez. We lost that quarterback and our thing went up. He was one of our lowest guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Fucking Hanker. Get off us. Right. Uh, and I, I think Meyer learned his lesson, too. He's not going to start taking any commitments from kids in their freshman year in high right. school. You just you can't do that. Yeah. It's, if, if the kid wants to be there his freshman year, he's going to want to be there his junior year and senior year. I don't give a shit you how know, many tattoos he gets. Yeah, I mean, and plus he he wasn't gonna play. I mean, he I think oh. the writing was on the wall, and he said, "What the fuck? I'm gonna be sixth string." He was gonna be sixth on the depth chart next fall. Yeah. And What's, it wouldn't you know it wouldn't have got better yeah, the next year. No. And and the kid that's in his class is the number one dual threat. <laughs> right. Which we kind of like at all. Yeah. State. And, and, then, and the kid and, and the kid coming in behind him is the number one in number one dual threat. So. Yeah. You know, I you know, I like the kid. I wish him luck, but yeah, you know, there shouldn't be any shitty feelings about it. He may end up at Indiana, actually. I thought he might go to Pitt, where his running back City was going. Maybe. Uh, I've, I've heard the, the Kentucky. Running, the running back from Hoban. I've heard Kentucky and Indiana. I haven't heard anything about Pitt, but that's possible. You know, I like the kid though. I got nothing bad to say about him. Um, he just knew where it was at, knew where his teachers got to be, and yeah. I think he's I think he's going to be a quality college quarterback um yeah know, he might, might end up being a great you know pocket passer i mean the guy i think can throw um we'll see i uh, think it says something though that yeah. he didn't develop he never gained a star in the last what two three years since he's been committed he never 
he never they developed goals to try and get better he right was, might have been a exactly. little bitch about some of that i i don't know i wish him good luck and i think he had really nice words to say to buckeye nation so yeah yeah good on you kid and good luck and do you, do you really want to play us man i mean stay in the acc right <laughs> Definitely. Or go to you know I don't know if you I don't know if you really want to play does, against because I because I mean I got to think he's always going to be a lifelong fan even if he even if he I mean unless he went to Michigan then fuck him no but, he wouldn't he's a, he's a Buckeye <laughs> his dad's a Buckeye yeah and yeah. and if he goes and plays for Purdue or Indiana when when he's sixty years old when he fucking watches football on Saturday he's going to turn the Buckeye game on <laughs> right it's the way it right is. yeah right all right. Oh, we've knocked that sucker out. Good job today, fellas. Any other final thoughts leading up to this Indiana game? No, no. I'm just looking forward to another great game. Just I, I, this team yeah. is so fun to watch. Just looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah you know, I'm... sometimes we get spoiled uh, and we we don't realize that we got only 12 weeks of this. You know, and then not counting. Uh, championship game and then playoffs but uh it's the season's short you know it flies by in a hurry it's only like three months we're yeah. third of the way through it exactly anything from you sean no i'm good fucking let's go all go right guys let me see same thing same thing let's go buckeye nation let's go hammer some fucking losers <laughs> all right this has been the buckeye cast uh, hit us up on uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube at the Buckeye Cast. Also visit the website thebuckeyecast.com. Once again, I want to thank Sean and the D. All right, see y'all. Thanks for having me, Jeff in the O. Yes, sir. And me in St. Pete. All right, see you, folks. Have a good one. Peace. Peace. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs>